Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Zenitsu, and you're listening to the DigiTalks podcast, the show that covers various topics from news to meta developments and everything in between for the fine folks who love the Digimon trading card game. Just as a quick reminder, I do stream this uh, over on uh, twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, and it's also uploaded as a YouTube uh, video under the YouTube channel of Zenitsu, on top of being on various podcasting platforms like Spotify for your viewing and listening pleasure. Please feel free to leave a rating, like, follow, subscribe, or whatever, depending on the platform that you're listening on. It really does help support the podcast. So today I am back with my co-host, Teddy, and we're going to be talking about, well, BT-16. So in terms of, like, how our opening experience was on top of the upcoming meta, and if we think anything should get banned or limited. So before we get into all of that, Teddy, uh, here uh, is uh, with the question of the week. All right. So uh, my question for you all this week is for those of you that have open product, how do you guys feel about it? I'm very interested in seeing the community response because I haven't seen too much yet besides uh, some things that I've seen specifically about like people who open cases and things like that. So I'm interested to see what the the mass general who opened just like a box or two or something of that nature felt about opening this set in particular. Yeah, I mean, I opened a half case and you opened a full case. Um, so uh, with my situation, it was a little bit interesting on how I was even able to obtain it because I said I wasn't going to be getting any product or I wasn't likely to get any product, but I decided to put in the effort called like six different stores and one of them finally have it drove about half hour 45 minutes out just to be able to get the product which doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal uh considering that's about a little bit longer than my drive to locals and uh i pre-bought some of the stuff online so i already had like four boxes saved for me so i go there i buy four boxes or i picked up my four boxes and then i was hemming and hawing over if I should just buy the rest because it was $95 a box, which I'm not usually comfortable with uh, because anyone who has been following the Digimon market knows that sealed product usually falls to about 75 on average. Um, So $20 per box more than normal definitely didn't feel good. But knowing that this set, for whatever reason, was in such short supply... Uh, definitely made me question it. So I know I called you literally while I was at the store. Yeah. Gave me a good little uh, uh, rundown of what uh, how we how we should think about in regards to getting product and stuff like that. So we had a good conversation about that. Yeah, and I talked to you and two other people, and basically everyone just unanimously agreed, like, yes, it's a lot of money, but just buy the case. Like, if if it's actually worth it right now to just buy the case, just buy the case. So I was ready to shell out the $1,200 for the case, but when I, uh, about a half hour later after calling some people, I walked back to the counter and said, hey, can I have some more? They were just like, oh, we thought you left. Uh, so we increased the price of the booster box. And I was just like, what? They were just like, yeah, now it's $135 instead of 95 And I'm just like, what? So that was kind of crazy. So I talked to the store owner and he's just like, okay, we honestly thought you left. We didn't know if you were going to be buying more or not, which is why we increased the price. Because, you know, when other stores are asking them for their case and but booster boxes for their communities... I know something is very clearly wrong with how things are handled with this set. So when I went to try to buy more, he's just like, okay, I'll compromise. I'll sell you two more boxes at about a hundred and I'll throw in a pre-release kit. So I was just like, fine. Uh, that's it. It is what it is. I'm not going to argue with him on his business practice. He's, he's trying to make it right while also still trying to make money because he's just like, look, you and I both know we usually lose out on uh, money when it comes to Digimon sets or like we sell it at cost because the booster boxes just tank in value. So I wasn't going to try to like argue with him over it. I was just like, that's fine. So that's how I got my six boxes. And you were just fortunate enough and smart enough to just straight up buy a case uh, when, you know, stores were pre-ordering stuff. 
Yeah, I bought mine. I mean, now you look at the price of cases, they're like almost $1,400 a case for this in particular. Uh, I bought mine at about $870, $880. That's Um, pretty good. And then add add about another $80 for the same day or next day shipping. Oh. So it was like $950, 960-ish. I mean, uh, which isn't bad for what it was. Right. Uh, and then, I mean, even if I just count what I've done today, I'm not even going to go over numbers and stuff like that. Um, made a decent amount back already. So it's it's been a very lucrative case. Um, still a very iffy on how I feel about it. Uh, but that's another thing. We'll go into that a little bit later. Right. And I was so desperate for product. I entered in the PPG win a case, which was actually split a case. Um, So the winner got four booster boxes uh, and then the prizing just went down to top eight, which is very top end heavy. There was about like 47 players in that event. So just shy of 50 and uh, Numimon came out. Oh, and BT 16 was legal for that event. So I was playing really with limited bt16 in a bt16 event and i think i came in like 13th which did seem that bad but considering i got no prizing for it it felt pretty bad um but 13th using mirage was okay i know gfg tyler um he won the event on numimon because eight ukamons is the dumbest thing ever uh and then it's crazy yeah, and then I know Tesoro was in top, and he was on Fenry, and he had a pretty decent build using some of the new Ukamons and Dino Beemon and the new Soul. So, like, BT-16 is definitely showing its strides. I don't know if any Magnas got into top, because according to Tesoro, he beat a lot of Lugamon, or not Lugamons, uh, him on Lugamon beat a lot of Mirages, which after playing that matchup multiple times, I know that it is in Lugamon's favor. Uh, it might not seem like it, but it, it actually is. And it's even in his favor more. So he, basically what happened in my perspective was all of the armor decks went up against Mirage, lost to Mirage because we have BT-13 Mach, which stops, you know, from being redirected so they went up into their mirage and it's just like can you deal with this like no i don't have to i just kill you i go around you um and then the lugamon with tesoro beat out all of the winning um mirages and then he loses to tyler so like there's there's still it seems like a good spread of decks but this was early early like i would almost say it's still pre-bt16 because Not a whole lot of people actually had product uh, that was playing. I did face a couple of Magnemons. I beat them. So that Mirage does beat up Magna, confirmed. Yeah, being able to swing past it is is quite nice. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't see... I didn't see a whole lot of, like, insane diversity. I faced, like, two or three Magnas. I faced a Rapidmon... And, uh, spoiler alert, the way to beat Mirage is, in terms of, like, for other decks, if you have a good enough level 6 Ace Digimon, you could just win against Magna because I'm forced to swing with my level 5s half the time. So, if you just have an Ace that outs a level 5 or an Ace that even outs my level 6, then the deck falls apart. So, I I lost to Rapidmon because of that, um... Oh, yeah. For having Rapid, like, Rapid is like, I mean, aces in general will probably be your biggest downfall. Like, being able, especially with Rapid, being able, if you can't bounce the level 5, if they have the protection or something of that nature, there's, like, nothing you can do. You just hope he doesn't have it. Which, half the time they do. Spoiler alert. So, it, <laughs> yeah. he, so that was an especially a rough matchup because he also had the secret rare uh, Rapid X, which just makes their life so much easier because now they have more consistent ways to apply pressure to force you to try to do something or you still just die to them just casually chipping and controlling your field. Like, it's it's a weird deck. It's still on the slow side, but, like, it has some really strong stuff going for it. But against, like, 
Magnamon, it, it kind of does struggle. So it feels like based on like how I was playing that event and what I saw, it really feels like we're kind of just in this like rock, paper, scissors area of the meta. And I don't know how condensed the meta is going to get compared to BT15. Because BT15, we're still missing like three data's worth of events. Um, so, but as of right now, we had like 33 decks legal. And like, it wasn't necessarily hardcore condensed to a top eight. It was like condensed to a top 10. But still, 33 decks and 10 decks being the majority of the representation is still pretty healthy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, but ideally I entered that to try to win product, so I didn't have to go out of my way to buy product, and that didn't work, so I scrambled and I just bought product, and uh, I'm going to eventually have my uh, half case opening either the day before this video comes out or the day after, somewhere around the time of this the recording of this podcast. But yeah, I noticed there was a little bit of clumping um, and I wasn't exactly super thrilled with that because I had two boxes that were double alt art boxes and they were the same exact double alt arts. Like they were almost exactly the same boxes. And it, I've opened enough cases to know the alt arts are usually the most random thing in the booster box. So me seeing consistent double alt arts, really, it not even just did that. I also, like a lot of my other alt arts were the same. Like I pulled, um... Two Kosuke's, two Chaoses, and two Dorumans, and two Pyildramans. Like, though, that was the majority of my alt arts. And I'm sitting here, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> usually, yeah, it doesn't feel good, because in the past, usually I get, like, an average of one of each of the different alt arts, but not in this set. And, like, when you hit those double alt art boxes, if they're not a secret... Like, literally, if you don't hit a secret rare or Pyildramon, you're just going to get hosed. Yeah, basically. It, it, you basically lose a large value of the box by just not hitting. Specifically, like, Ukomon, um I mean, any of the secret rare alt arts. If you don't hit any of those, you're kind of getting wrecked. Uh and the only tamer one that's worth any money is literally just Matt Davis. Or Davis and Ken, not Matt Davis. But yeah. Davis and Ken. Um, those, if you don't hit any of those alt arts, you're basically just losing the entire value of the box. Like, you are getting destroyed. And it's... even if you hit those, if you don't hit those, like that one, and then one of the bigger alt arts, you basically just lose all the value of the box. Yeah, especially since we're paying an abnormally high amount for the booster box. Like, it's basically, Correct. if you don't hit a secret or, like, one of those, like, chase alt arts, just you're, just, you're just dead. It's game over. Because yeah, you're not making the money back on the box. Almost 100%. Yeah, because the secondary market is starting to cool off. It'll probably take a little bit longer to cool off than normal as, like, product was actually kind of hard to come by. Um, and EU still hasn't gotten their stuff. Yeah, EU also hasn't still gotten their stuff, which does suck for them, <clears throat> considering there's just so many issues with this set, just getting the set to begin with. And then opening the set kind of didn't feel super great. I have some adventure boxes coming, so hopefully Same. those don't feel bad, but we'll see. I hope not. I hope I didn't just waste $75 or 80 dollars on them, and then they just feel horrible to open. Yeah, I mean, but, like, the really awkward thing is with the price of the booster box being, like, almost at that 150 price point, and if you're able to buy the adventure boxes for their MSRP, which is $25, uh, literally, if you just buy six of them, you have the equivalent of a booster box, and you could actually plus even harder than a booster box because you also have the promos that are coming inside of it, where this, this set, there is no, like, good uh, box topper, like, they're just eggs, yeah. and the eggs are garbage, so it's just like... I haven't even opened the packs. I have all of them sitting right here. I've not opened them yet. I opened mine, and it really wasn't worth it. Like, the, almost none of these eggs are good. I think, like, the best one is literally uh, Demi Devimon, and that's it. I think maybe Minomon yeah. is okay, but Demi Devi is, like, the best one out of all of these eggs. Oh, yeah. Demi and then the Doru or the Dorimon is not bad, but that's, like, future good, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. not good now, but it's like okay later. Those are like the two. If you don't hit any of those two, you basically just wasted opening the pack. You're better off selling the pack 
just as a pack. <laughs> like, and then letting the other person deal with opening it. Right. And, mm. like, it's it's just really weird how many small things have gone wrong with this set specifically. And we haven't really seen, like, supply shortages since literally, like, year one, which was, like, Special Booster 1.0, 1. 1.5. Uh, I think BT4 was normal, but I think, like, BT5 there was a little bit of issues. Um, and then, like, maybe BT9 just because of how hype that set was and how powerful that set was. Uh, those are, like, the only real comparisons in terms of, like, shortages that I've experienced from playing this game at the beginning. So this being shorted is quite an anomaly. I don't know if it's literally because Bandai is printing five TCGs because <clears throat> they definitely should be prepping their printers for Union Arena if they already haven't. But they have two Dragon Ball games, Digimon, and One Piece. Uh, on top of, uh, I totally forgot about Battle Spirits. Um, so they ha they have six games on their printer. So I don't know if they're asking other print companies to use their printers or if they're still doing everything in house. But it definitely feels like something is just very wrong in the Bandai sphere. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. I don't know what uh, they need to up their quality control. Is probably what it is. At least in regards to like in my case. And people, at least the cases, the, the people that bought cases, because that clumping is really bad. Like, it's 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 quite bad, and it really hampers your enjoyment of opening the box. I still had fun opening them, because I was messing around with some friends, opening the boxes. That'll always be fun. Anything with friends will just be fun. But, like, then after, like, the dust settled, and I was, like, looking at my cards, I was like, wow, I really did not do good. <laughs> I was like... I did pretty bad. It's like, I did pretty bad this set. Like, in regards to, like, my SRs, even just the SRs, not even just the Seeker Rares. Like, yeah, I, you could say, like, my my case was crazy because I pulled eight Magna Xs. But, like, as somebody who wants to build all the decks, and that's the reason I get cases, it, it definitely makes me not want to buy a case when I buy a case and I don't get all of my play sets. Or at least close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, because now you're going to have to have the hassle of just trying to, like, sell the cards off, do some trading and finagling just to be able to get, like, to finish what you already should have gotten mathematically. Uh, because if anyone's unfamiliar with, like, case ratios, um, you're usually going to get eight base secrets in a normal BT set. Uh, it goes yes. down to sixes, like, six uh, base secrets for EX sets. But uh, EX sets, they supplement that with a whole bunch of extra alt arts, which they think that's a fair value. It's realistically not at most Sometimes of the time. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it but... is. Most of the time it's not. But this set... Yeah. Um, it was not. Yeah. I'll go ahead and let you know. This set, uh, the, what they did, I don't know how, the quality control got really bad or something like that, but it was, it was pretty bad. Um, fun to open, yes, because just opening with friends will always be fun, but it... It, uh, it really sucked, not gonna front. Yeah, and as far as, like, super rares, your average amount is going to be anywhere between 8 and 9 of any given one. So, like, that's, again, just pure mathematical averages, which, if you're buying something in that large of a quantity, that's usually the expected outcome. Uh, it is cool that you got 8 Magna Xs, though, because at least you got the higher value yeah. super, or you got the higher value secret, so you could at least have an easier time trading and selling those off and then picking up the rapids, um, but that is kind of crazy that it, it wasn't even close at all, because usually it was not. I've had some where it was like 3 and 5, which is one off. And I'm just like, okay, that's whatever. That's not the end of the world. Because I think that happened to me in BT7. I was really mad that I didn't get four Susanos. But in hindsight, um, getting three Susanos was probably fine. Um, I was about to say, considering Lucimon was the one that held, uh, held yeah. its value. But regardless. Um, that's hindsight will always be 2020. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I, I'm on the same boat. I think, or at least in my case, more often than not, when I got cases, I always got play sets of everything. Like, 
I don't I don't think I can recall a time where I ne- didn't get a playset in my when I got a case, a full case at least. Um, that's I always got playsets of everything, and a lot of times I had extras of like the secret rares and things like that. And that's usually when I would end up selling and extra trading, etc., for alt arts and whatever crap I wanted to get. Um, but like this said, I, I mean, even my SRs, I barely had enough, <laughs> and often an entire case. Like, I mean, I could literally pull out my my extras from BT thirteen, and I still have extras of all the SRs from that set. <laughs> like, yeah, it was and... better distributed amongst uh, amongst the the case. I mean, BT that, BT14 as well. I still have all my extras for that, and I have a good amount of all those. BT14 Uh, felt weird because it felt like you, there were box types. So it's like you were either in an ace box or you were in a rookie box. And I think that kind of felt weird. Uh, It wasn't exactly the case because you had the third outlier where it's just like, yeah, this is just what the normal box feels like. But like in BT14, if you see an ace, there's a high chance that you're going to see all of the aces. And if you see a rookie, there's a high chance you're going to see all the rookies. I don't exactly have concrete numbers, but it really felt that way. And we haven't seen like hardcore seeding, I'll say, since BT4. BT4 was like the biggest black like black eye on Bandai when it comes to booster box seeding because your box topper dictated which seed oh, you were in and there were very very clearly defined seeds. I think like there was one other set where it was semi seeded where there was a higher likelihood of like kind of like clumping um but it wasn't exactly like clumping because there was still like some sort of mythology behind it uh but I think like they're definitely uh based on a lot of the other like case and box openings and talking with people and reading their uh perception on the internet it definitely seems like this set when you're opening it in a larger quantity there is a very clear clumping issue there's no clear clumps because that's going to vary from case to case but the fact that there is a clumping issue is a problem in of itself yeah it just makes opening product worse because then like for example like let's say i didn't get a case and uh like for in my specific example let's say i got the first four boxes of this case and that was all i bought all i got were double alt arts so i didn't even get any secret rares so it's like that would be horrible in yeah. this case like if you got that like if you mind you some of the alt arts i got were okay like i got some of the sylphimon the, the valkyrie mon ace alt art uh i did get ukomon alt art which is a big one that's like 50 bucks and then I did get the Pale Jabon alt art from those first four boxes. But, like, that's that's okay. But, like, those boxes wouldn't be that great. Like, if I took the price of those cards and add them all up, that's nowhere near four boxes. <laughs> like, the, uh, at least the amount it is right now. Like, it is not even close. Yeah, because I was looking... $500, $600, basically. Yeah, I was playing a little game uh, with chat when I was opening up my my half case where it's just like, was this box a successful box or not? Like, if I just bought the singles, would this box have been successful? And uh, the majority of them, because I did pull enough, like, good alt arts and secrets, uh, the majority of them were yes. Uh, There was one box where I actually did pull one of the chase cards. I did pull the uh, SP Valkyrie which that was really good, but it came out of like literally the worst box ever, which was a repeat of the worst box that I pulled, which was that double alt art box. And that double alt art box being Chaos and uh, Kosuke, I would have gotten hosed twice out of the six booster boxes that I gotten, which that's... That's horrible. Yeah, I mean, it happens, and it that's just the gambler, like the gambler's risk. But when the booster boxes are this high, that's what ends up creating a toxic product where it's just like, okay, there's some really good cards of value in here, but when nobody wants to open it because the risk is too high, that's usually the sign for red flags, which is exactly what happened with uh, the resurgence booster because there were some really bomb rares, but the fact that you weren't guaranteed any of the new rares 
which were the hardest cards to pull in the set, harder than the supers and whatever. Um, it just created a toxic product that nobody wanted and was still too high of a risk, even at the like $40 price it's been holding forever. I think you could get it now for like 30 and even then $30 is still too high for the, the amount of risk that goes into that set. So, like, that's part of what determines the market value is just how much value is actually in there and what's the risk like. Yeah, it's, I mean, in the case of, like, RB01, like, if you didn't get a few Monze Mons, you were just hosts. Like, you weren't getting nothing from the box. It was basically awful, which is crazy because that's just a rare. Even yeah. the SRs are not worth nothing. So it's like... It just there, there's intrinsic value with some of the cards because, of course, the playable cards will always hold more value. Um, like your meta cards are going to be the ones that everybody wants. Hence, we look at this set and there's like pale Dramons are like 20 bucks a piece. You have your Magnas and your Rapid Bonds who are like six, like 50 and 70 dollars a piece. I mean, these cards, everybody wants them, and. If you're unlucky and you get these horrible, like if you, let's say, oh, I'm going to buy four, and you bought like the first four of my case, you would just be hosed. You'd be screwed at shit out of luck, especially if you paid the 150 Like, you spend $600 to get basically nothing. Yeah, that... And you can't even, like, trade. You would have to, like, use all of your cards that you pulled to trade for the Magnaxes and stuff like that. And even then, which it is still probably wouldn't get you there. You probably still have to pay them. <laughs> extra because of the magnetics so it's like that's not that's not good like it's and i get you know like it's a magnex and rapid x they're secret rares they're the the chase cards are the ones that everybody wants but like that's not it's not great to have that be something that it it makes it impossible or it feels horrible to pull like no one wants to buy the product Everybody would just rather get the cards outright in singles. And it actually, now it would be more cost effective. But even like, let's say I want to buy just the Magnexus. It's not cost effective to buy those. So then like, do you take the risk and buy a box hoping that you get one or two, which is not very likely. Right. And that's like partially uh, like when I was doing like booster box analytics on whether this was a safe purchase or not, I was going into that type of stuff with a lot of data to back the decisions that I was making. And this extends yeah. to more than just Digimon. It's just a card game thing in general. Like uh, from Magic, what was the likelihood of you pulling a fetch land out of uh, whatever master's booster? Uh, just that type of a thing is something that you need to look at and i even though like the booster boxes are kind of expensive for the most part you probably have about a 60 maybe 70 percent chance of success and you really only have like that 30 to 40 percent chance of failure which is still pretty high but again the price is really high and like that's the hardest pill to swallow is like what price point are you comfortable with with taking this type of a risk because we've seen like in bt11 like bt11 had the most expensive secret we've seen in a long time outside of uh bt9 which mm. bt9 was death x uh bt11 there was rena and then ex4 which is an ex set which again there's just less secrets per case um we had uh ruin mode and those have been the most expensive secrets in a long time and it was very understandable how those cards got to the price point that they were death x is a highly splashable card that a lot of decks use same thing with ruin mode and uh rena was a four of in one of the more premier combo based blue decks uh, that's also still got the waifu good. tax. And... Yeah, and then waifu tax on top of that because we've seen playable four of secrets before, like Fanglong. He was like one of the better decks of the BT15 meta. He was pretty decent in the EX5 meta. Twenty something dollars. Yeah, and that's like a twenty something dollar card. But the playability of that card is limited to the deck that it was in. So, Correct. like that's why the price wasn't insanely super high same thing with just a lot of the secrets it's just like a lot of the secrets that we usually have are 
hyper deck specific. And when they're not hyper deck specific is usually when they start going absolutely ballistic or there's waifu tax. So anyone who's hoping for Mirai in uh, EX6, she's going to basically be Rena 2.0, a $40 to $50 card, especially since EX sets have less overall secrets per case. So that card's going to be even harder to get than what Rena was. Yeah, that one's going to suck if you want to max her to your mass demands and all that other shenanigans. Yeah, but that's like the type of information being aware of makes you a more informed uh, customer. Uh, I don't want to say consumer because consumer is just such a bad term because it just implies that you're just consuming products. Some people are consumers, but I like to think of myself as a customer where I am going into my purchases trying to be as informed as I can, knowing that this is the purchase that I want to make rather than I need to make this purchase, therefore I, I'm i just going to blindly purchase it. That's, that's to me, a consumer um, versus a customer. Yeah, and that's understandable. Thing is, like, the casual group of people won't go into it with that mindset. No, they won't. And it seems like... They'll go into it and just buy a box, be like, oh, I I hope I get my secret rare. And then they open a box most more often than not you usually do, but it's... Then you have, like, these clumping things where you have, like, a case that's half the case, more than half my case, which is double alt arts. And then you get that where someone's like, man, I really want to play Magna. I hope I get a copy or two so that I don't have to buy all of them outright. And that's luck. So I can, you can't, you, you kind of can't complain about that, but you can at the same time. If the, if the odds are more skewed in your favor, which I don't think they are in this case, um, unless you're just very lucky and you got from the right side of the case or something of that nature. Um, Because I don't know how... I can't even act like I know how they box the stuff or how they put the cards in the pack or anything of that nature. I don't know how how that goes or what determines that. Um, But there there clearly was some... Oh, we'll just be lazy about it this time around. And it really hurts the opening experience. Yeah, and being, like, to casuals, the opening experience is one of the most important aspects of, you know, getting a booster box next to the cards that you're trying to hunt for inside of the booster box. Which, this set, more specifically compared to a lot of other sets in the past, this seems like it is the power spike point. You could technically say BT-15 was supposed to be that power spike point, but they kneecapped Apocalymon real quick. Yes, it hurt the booster box, but it, it was needed. It helped car- the game. It helped the Hurt game. the box, keep the game healthy. Right, and it led to one of our more healthier formats as a result uh, that a lot of people participated in and there was a lot of events for, especially knowing that this was going to be a longer event, like a longer uh, meta. And now that we're entering the BT-16 meta, uh, I almost feel like Bandai at this point just needs to take like the Dragon Ball Super Masters approach where with the release of every set, they should, like every main set, I'll, I'll correct myself, every main set, there should be a updated ban and restriction list. Um, and I could see that being the case. Just to shake up the format. And, like, certain cards are proving themselves to be more problematic, not only just from a gameplay perspective, from a design perspective, too, because it really is, like, certain cards do just straight-up cannibalize gameplay styles, mechanics, uh, color identities. Like, so this is kind of where we're going to be talking about, like, bans and restrictions, because, like, we obviously we don't know exactly how the BT-16 meta is going to shape up, but we know based on Japanese data, Japanese feedback, and, you know, just good design sense in a, in a way, uh, or, like, good player sense, like, what's going to be good, this set. So, like, oh, yeah. I, I'm i an open anti-yellow advocate. I'll, I'll say that right now. I do have a bias towards hating yellow, and I want to see either Patamon or Emissary, or ideally both of them, gone. I think those cards 
are incredibly stupid. And you can make the argument where it's just like, oh, but yellow hasn't really done anything and it, it hasn't put up any good results and it needs these cards. And I'm just like, no, because then we're getting into Jet Selfie territory where Patamon, TK, Emissary is yellow. There is no yellow without those cards. And like, I think that's really bad. Uh, sure, you could say, oh, but yellow's getting Shushumon uh, and puppets and whatnot with the Liberator stuff. And I'm just telling you right now, based on early results, it's not good enough. <laughs> it's not. And, like, the better yellow decks are still Patamon decks. And Patamon, like, right now is being abused in yellow vaccine armor to basically gain you a memory when you digivolve into your level 4, and the level 4 you're digivolving into has an abnormally high evolution cost because that's the balancing you know, mechanic of the card. It's a really strong card, but it costs a lot. And Patamon basically eliminates that. And that's what makes Patamon super dangerous is the fact that he is literally eliminating cost. I can have a level four cost 10 to digivolve into. And if it's a yellow vaccine, Patamon can do it for free. And then balance goes out the window because of it. It, it is just a card playing with fire. And that's why I really don't like it. Same thing with, like, Emissary. It, it makes it so you really have to watch yourself on what you're going to be designing because one small mistake, as we are clearly seeing right now with Armor Vaccines, and yellow is just easily the best color in the entire game because it's already working with some of the best mechanics in the entire game, uh, which is why they are usually very cautious about giving yellow good cards is because of how powerful its mechanics and core identity is. See, I have an argument regarding those yellow cards. I wholeheartedly agree on the option card. Uh, what's it called? Emissary. Wholeheartedly agree. One cost is much too cheap to go into a level 6 or level 5, whatever. Any maxine level 6 or lower from your security. That is just too easy, too free. I think if I had the choice in yellow specifically, I don't think it's Patamon. I think Patamon is necessary for a lot of yellow decks to even function. Really? What I would take out instead of Patamon is TK. I would remove that three cost TK any day of the week over Patamon. I mean, I do think that because TK... TK is a lot worse in my opinion because TK allows you to guarantee put something into your security to gain a memory infinitely that cannot be blocked. At Patamon memory, you can block. Can't block TK memory. And it's three cost and you can use it to continuously keep procking the Magnamon X effect for cheap. So once you are able to establish one Magnamon X, as long as you just hold TKs in your hand, you just slam them down and you just get free value. On top of getting the extra protection for your Magna X every turn before even having the swing. You're, like, you're not to me, wrong. That's way worse than just that. Like I get, you know, it's definitely strong for them to go into a like just promote and going to any rapid with a Patamon, but I would rather get rid of the thing that allows them to do that every time if they have the thing. Whereas if they promote a Patamon randomly and they don't know what's in their security and they don't hit, they just let that Patamon go. That stack is done effectively. And then they have to pay the full cost to do that. I would rather that and then have to force them to have to take the gamble than have that card tk and guarantee it every time that to me is worse than patamon yeah because like the so, aces are strong but i don't necessarily think like they're no, outside of their realm. Balance. yeah i i think like they're not any like they're not zudo ace level strong where it's just like no. oh my my ace is dealing with your ace and my ace can deal with more than just like what the opponent is doing like Zudo ace is clearly one of the strongest level five aces so i think like the aces are fine where they're at they're strong they're powerful they're impactful but cool. yeah something with that tk patamon like emissary package is just absurdly broken and something about it just needs to go if not the entire package like if you t ask me if they just say ban just ban emissary and tk and everything else is fine i guarantee you the deck dramatically gets weaker. I not, It's not even like a, oh, maybe. No, I guarantee you it gets cheaper. 
it gets way worse because now they have to hope that there's something in their security or they have to pay the four cost TK and have to run that in higher quantities. And that's just a brick a lot of the time when they slam that down. Then a lot of times they won't be able to gain the memory back efficiently enough to keep it on their turn. Yeah, I mean... So it's like, there, that's there is, way better to me. Yeah, there there is something fundamentally broken with that package as a whole. And I do think, like, whatever they hit, something from that needs to go because whatever they hit from it, it will slow down what Magnamon uh, and Yellow Vaccines is doing, which... If anyone's curious on how fast yellow can just like people complain oh, about mirage so printing easy. memory. Yeah, people complain about mirage printing memory, but like yellow just hardcore cheats on memory because for literally a total of zero, you could go from a Patamon and raising all the way up into a level six Digimon. That's already ruining your field, has protection, and just doing whatever it's doing. Uh like, for literally again before one. this podcast, I was playing uh, yeah, I was playing the deck, the yellow vaccine deck, and every game I played against the student, I had Patamon TK, and then level four, level six in hand. So like that, that is absurd. Like, I just having TK, I think is just a big deal. Like just being able to guarantee, it. like that to be guaranteed, put anything that you want to Evo, and that 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 I think is the worst part. I think yellow can function without TK or Emissary, but it can't function without Pata. Because a lot of decks need that Pata ball to even function. Yeah, because I know there was talks about like unrestricting um, some cards, and one of the big ones was the uh, Greymon X Antibody. And while I do think, like, yes, the game has gotten to a point speed-wise where probably Greymon isn't seen as something absurdly broken anymore uh it, it still is like if i was like no i don't think you bring that back. yeah some some people just really want it and i don't like i'm in the personal philosophy of if it was good enough to get onto that ban list it really doesn't deserve stay. to come off of it it should stay there almost 99 percent of the time yeah and there's a few far... outlier examples like like uh what's it called savior and stuff like that Light. Even then, if you think about like what Savior does, it's still better than almost every other. Oh, just it's like... still better than every other level five. Don't get the wrong idea. But yeah. like, there were level fives in the game. There are level fours in the game that were doing the same thing but better. Than yeah, other decks. The so the like... idea and prospect of multi swinging is already just very strong in Digimon because that just means you could slap on whatever other additional value on top of that, and yeah. That's that's usually why like decks like Mirage and All Force and uh, usually unsuspending is a very blue thing to do, uh, and that's why blue usually stays very meta prevalent is because oh we just have ways to be able to just dump damage versus other decks that just literally cannot um, and do it efficient. Yes, uh, and Savior did that for Jespon, and now that Jespon has consistency issues compared to the rest of the game they were just like okay it's probably fine just to bring it back throw Jespon a bone uh same thing with like tommy and blue hybrids but with all of the hybrid stuff coming out in bt18 who knows if that's actually gonna end up like being broken or not we'll we'll see when tommy's stuff gets spoiled uh because like, right now some of these new hybrid stuff looks correct but it also seems like they're trying to reboot hybrids to basically like be the bt18 hybrids where it's just like you're either playing the bt18 hybrids with maybe a little bit of other hybrid stuff from what we previously had or you're just playing an older hybrid deck uh so it'll be interesting to see what happens because tommy and jet Sylphie are two hybrid based cards uh jet Sylphie's still currently on the list and tommy off the list so who knows if that's gonna end up being a mistake if tommy coming off the list or not we'll see um i doubt it but as far as like thinking about hybrid decks um like hybrid decks right now are some of the more are in like some of the more prime positions to abuse the next card that i want to talk about which is ukamon uh ukamon is one of the most divisive cards in the entire game, just because it's probably one of the best cards in the entire game. Uh, both the promo and the BT-16. More so BT-16 than the promo, uh, although they're both incredibly stupid in their own special ways. 
the I was about to say I'm like yeah they're both insane <laughs> yeah and I want personally both of them to get hit I do not think Ukamon needs to be a card that needs to be in the game and when we're talking about get hit it's either a get limited or get out of here like just banned but we only have one straight up banned card I think they need to start actually limiting to zero more cards because like there was a round in a tournament where I did lose to the like what two percent chance that the one of was going to be in their security and it did feel like insanely luck sacky and it felt insanely bad and I don't know uh, a lot of people say the same thing with like oh bloom just drew the hpd so they just win the game because they could print money or not money memory, memory. and do just whatever they want um and they're not entirely wrong uh they're it's still an incredibly stupid card that i just would rather not see uh so maybe they do need to take a little bit more active uh in actually banning cards and i don't know if they just want to ban or limit ukamon but he needs to get hit in some way shape or form because the amount of aggression that ukamon himself is applying to the game is game warping I wholeheartedly agree. I think Ukoman is not a card that needs to exist. It, like, I don't understand why it was, what it was there to fix. Because it just, all it did was make decks that wanted to rush be even more efficient. Like Numemon and stuff like that. Like, it just, while also still maintaining, like, memory consistency. So I don't understand like, what it was meant to do. And I get, you know, they wanted to make Ukoman. And I, I, in its own deck, it really isn't that bad. But they don't use it in its own deck. No, no one big, plays Big Ukoman. Ukoman they is play a it joke. in every deck. They play it in every other deck. And it's like, oh, I don't have a good rookie for this slot. Just throw in Ukoman. Why not? Like, do I need memory? Sure, I'll just run the promo. Do I need this more search? Add a Tamer or a Digimon card. Like, I don't understand why they were so easily like flexible in how you can use them, and then being able them being able to evolve on any color is like annoying. I don't I don't understand. Yeah, just already hatching a new egg in the raising area is something we have not seen them play around with a whole lot. And when they did, it was strictly limited to just green because that was like one of Green's gimmicks was it was efficient but it was, on using it was behind the raising under a condition you had right. to have a level five or you least. yeah or willis where it just hatches a new egg but that usually willis costing three that's the cost of hatching a new egg um and like it it is you're not, like willis isn't moving it out to hatch a new egg and mimi also isn't doing it they're both giving you the half step uh ukamon is giving you the full step it is basically giving you an entire extra phase on a single card which is absolutely insane and that's what's speeding up the game is because ukamon's giving you a full extra raising area to be able to reload your rookie while gaining you extra resources at the same time the card is extra pushed both of them and i do not like the design i understand where it's coming from after watching the movie but that doesn't mean I agree with it and doesn't mean that I don't think it's stupid because it is. I wholeheartedly agree. I I'm not I, I am definitely not on the limited bandwagon. I want things banned. Like if you're gonna get rid of it, get rid of it completely. I don't wanna get sacked out by homie drawing the one offs. I think that feels awful. Yeah, like Ice um, Wall can go to one, go to zero. Um I think Ice Wall is not that bad at one. It feels bad when they do it but at least at one it's not the worst it, like a, it, it requires them to do it at the best time possible otherwise they just waste the card whereas like like hpd that feels horrible when they draw the one off yeah because like, you can control when like it's crap. good yeah <laughs> like you... that feels horrible when they're like hpd uh suspend my level five go into bloom gain four plus memory and it's just like okay like <laughs> what that's that's crazy or if yeah they... or even just right now just using it in tyrant it's just like yeah metal life into tyrant for uh, one yeah for one tyrant swing kill your dude now he's suspended or like yeah it's it's just incredibly incredibly poorly awful. designed 
Yeah. Like that is like one of the worst feelings in and like you, you don't feel like you got outplayed. You feel like they just drew the right card. They drew the one-off card. One-offs need to go. I've never been a fan of one-offs. I don't know why they do that. You're they either do having it to like make two cards. Yeah, they they do it to make cards still somewhat playable. They can't do it at two because two with the way Digimon has like so much search and dig, you're there's a higher we'll probably chance. See it. Yeah, there's there's a high chance that you'll still end up seeing it versus the one of, which is why it's just like, oh yeah, one or none. Um, yeah, cards are like this where they just have so much value, like Ugo. I, I just don't think they have a good place in the game. I think they're very unhealthy. Yes. And right now they're they're absurdly good right now, but I can't imagine when like something is even better. Like when we see like I don't I've messed with some of like further sets like bt17 and stuff and that in combo with like blue hybrid is pretty nutty i'm like just the amount it's just too much search too much draw power too much gain like, yeah and the fact gain. that you can still like attack with them and then use yeah. louis in combination to basically gain Print extra resources memory. yeah it's it's just a very incredibly poorly thought out card and its ramifications on the game is like, it's very much known and it's very much being felt. And like, but, sure. You could say that like, Oh, but think about the decks that use it and how it'll impact them. The only real impact is they slow down. That is it. Yeah. That, that is their impact. Still good. Yes. Numenon Numenon will still, still be Numenon. just fine. Yeah. Like the decks that use it, like, I mean, in for my example, like I've, I've been using it a lot, using them both a lot in, um, Mallow my Otismon, just because you don't really use your level threes like that, and like that, it makes it feel like I'm not even playing Mallow my Otismon. Yeah, you're just playing like Ukomon with a Mallow. Ukomon you. rush, and then I have a random trash whenever they die, trash my level five and sixes so that I can play them for free later. And it's like, like shit like that is like that's kind of not like it makes it feel like you're bastardizing the decks. Yeah, you you kind of are because it's just like Belfi is in that same type of category where it's just like yeah, here's Ukumon Rush and then you just have Belfi cards also, uh like just six to eight Ukumon can go into more decks than people think about because like there's different deck styles which we haven't really done like a huge deep dive and exploration of but like the way I like to describe it is you have your hard play decks which are the decks that just want to hard play Digimon. Then you have your uh, stack-based decks, and then you have, like, the in-between those two, where it's just, like, it has elements of both. And yeah. Ukamon is bad in none of those situations. Like, it's it's good in every single deck type. Oh, you want just an easy searcher to set yourself up with your combo for a stack-based deck? Cool, run, like, two Ukamon that search. Uh, you're a hard play deck that doesn't really have a dedicated rookie because everything you're going to be playing is not a rookie cool throw in ukamon and then it just does the work for you and it makes your deck more consistent and more fluid like it's it's attributing to what i uh what magic has i was gonna say what i call the magic problem but magic already solved this problem because they learned after like what 20 years that oh generic colored artifacts are too good no bueno <laughs> yeah They're not like good. yeah they they stopped printing as many colorless artifacts because they realized with certain colorless artifacts that they printed because it's colorless it goes into everything there's zero downside to running it and that was overall harming the game which is why they started doing colored artifacts now uh and that's been a going trend and they've been reserving colorless artifacts for very specific things and Ukamon is basically the equivalent of, like, the soul ring for Commander. Every Commander deck needs to have the soul ring because it's just one of the easiest early game enablers to accelerate your overall game plan. And Ukamon is on that type of a level where it is just that stupid. Wholeheartedly agree. So, like... I mean, even if you just limit Ukamon to one and you just force them to run, like, one of each of the Ukamons, it's like, players now aren't going to exactly think about doing that. Some decks will obviously still want to do that if they can. Uh, but then again, you also get into the, oh, I you saw your one of uh, Saki card. Cool, thanks. Uh, which, I'm just not a fan of that. Yeah, especially since, like, decks are getting more streamlined than they've ever been before because of the uh, training cards, which I personally 
would love to see the training cards get hit to one. I know they're not going to, but I would love to see those cards get hit to one because those cards are also game warping and game defining. Like literally, we had a deck like Greymon. Uh Greymon has a very hard time using the training cards. Therefore, it doesn't. Therefore, it is now a bad deck because it can't use those cards. Uh, and that's wild to me. Absolutely wild. So, like, we saw a huge shift in BT14 when we got those cards introduced to what literally was viable because of them and what wasn't. Like, I, I hate these generic staple cards because of that reason. Some people say, oh, but it makes the weak decks better. And then... The counter argument that is all yeah theoretically the counter argument is always going to be cool. The decks that can't use them are no longer viable, and then the decks that were already good that can use them are still better than the bad decks that can use them. So like you're literally gaining absolutely zero ground, and you're losing more than what you're actually gaining, which is why I want to see the training cards get hit. I think like memory boosts are fine because of their cost. And the limitation on the searching. But the the training cards, yes, they don't search as deep, but they can search more targets, so they'll hit things more often. On top of the fact that, like, it's just a very incredibly stupid card on it's just like, okay. the fact that it's literally free. Because at least with the memory boosts, for three memory, you get two back. Okay, that's a that's two rebate. For, uh, so you still spent a total of one memory on it overall, even though that's not exactly how that works. But uh, for for math's sake, it's it's the fact that there was still a deficit that you put into that card. The training cards still give you two memory back while also costing two, while also getting around some certain floodgates. And like you could say that's kind of the pros and cons, but more people are running anti-memory block floodgates than reduced digivolution cost floodgates because of the colors that they're present in. So... There's no real downside to running them. It's like you see, even if you say like that, like oh, it only gives it gives you two memory, effectively makes it so you're playing for two, you're gaining two memory, and you're adding a card to your hand. Yeah, and any card, and you can guarantee if you build your deck a certain way, you can guarantee that you hit any target in your deck. And it's just incredibly dangerous. To, like. We've already seen them hit cards because of speed and consistency. Like, they cause speed and consistency issues. And they're just introducing more cards that are causing speed and consistency issues and not doing anything about them when they're very clearly running a rampant on the game. And that's kind of like the same type of space that the Patamon package is taking up for yellow, where it's just like, the reason why every yellow deck is playing it is because it is just that good compared to everything else the entire color is doing. And that's... Correct. That's pretty sad. And that's what Jet Silphimon was doing, where this little thing is cannibalizing the entire color as a whole, which is not good for, you know, the game and the color as a whole. See, I'm, I, I understand completely with that. I still would rather see, like, the option or TK before, well, preferably both of those cards before Pat. Um, I mean, something the deck's, from it. Yeah. Yeah. I think those, <coughs> uh, if I had that, it would definitely be those two. Leave T, Pat, Pata, because Pata allows you to do a bunch of flexibility with all the vaccine stuff. Yeah. But those cards just allay, enable degeneracy. Those two cards in particular. I mean, that we already talked about it earlier, yeah. that that package is nothing but it degenerate. Is but uh, I know this is, like, I know a lot of people really want Magna X, the new BT16 secret, to be hit. I honestly don't think that they're going to. I do think that's an incredibly stupid card as well. Like, this is where, like, I just look at some of Bandai's recent design choices, and I'm just like, why? Just why? You already said that Apocalypse was too fast, too consistent, too hard to deal with, and created unfun gameplay. And that's exactly the same type of mentality that uh, players are having with Magnamon, where it's just like, it's too fast, it's too consistent, you can't really, it's so hard to counter, and there's no real, like, there's not a really good back and forth once it's out, and it's just a very oppressive card that is currently going to be warping the landscape of the entire meta, if not the entire game, because looking at uh, Japanese results, it's still the best deck, next to Numimon, 
and Numemon is abusing Ukamon, which is why it's partially still the best deck. So it's just like, what are we doing here? Like, I know they're not going to hit it because it's another secret rare, and they can't like hit keep hitting secret rares that they just keep printing. But they keep printing stupid secret rares. So it's like, what are we actually supposed to do about Magnamon? Because like, sure, okay, they hit the something from the Patamon package, and that slows down the yellow side. But then we still have the blue problem, where it's just like, okay, blue can't trigger that ability as consistently but it still can trigger it very very regularly and maybe they just start playing a little bit more into like a blue low end yellow high end just to be able to trigger it more and more uh so like i don't know like it's it's a very hard card to hit because of the rarity but like what else do you hit around it to slow it down thing is like i i am at least maybe i'm i'm probably in the minority here when it comes to this card in particular. I don't think this card needs to be hit. I think you just kill the pad- the yellow engine. And this deck, the yellow, at least yellow vaccine version of the deck, is infinitely worse. Like, it makes it so much harder. Because even just playing it, like, I played it a lot. And it breaks pretty bad. Like, there are plenty of times where you just... Oh, I don't have Magna X or I have nothing but cards to go but i can't get into back to x because i don't have level five or i don't have like the yellow portion of the deck is pretty inconsistent in regards to um and, and just draw power in general like you don't draw that much aside from hoping that you see tk plus that and then you can take card from your security and then put it hoping you see pata as well so like if you don't see pata turn one it's like ugh, your turn your, your game plan dramatically gets worse so it's like you you could say just hit pata or hit the, the cards that make it better and then the blue engine is honestly worse in that regard because yeah you can you have searchers and stuff but you're constantly having to play bodies and stuff and they're easy to get rid of like i don't know i've played a lot of this format already and it, it really isn't that bad to go past them like if you're going out of your way and you're running tech, tech cards that you need to run it it really isn't that bad to you you could just bypass magna x a lot of the time it it really the only problem i have with magna x in regards to like him existing is that heaven's judgment exists yeah and that's like if heaven's judgment wasn't there i guarantee you mag no one would complain about magna x that hard because that's like their main form of removal they get into magna x and then you once they stick the magna x once and you try to build a board to retaliate they just nuke the board completely with that card. Heaven... If you just take that card, I guarantee you, now they have to run inefficient options to remove the bodies, and that makes it infinitely easier to deal with it. Yeah, Heaven's Judgment screams, like, mm. I can be a very easy problem in the future based on color identities. And I think it's we a problem are... now. I mean, I it, 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 is a pro- it is a problem now because it's a yellow card that green decks can also use, and then for each color like on its own without any colors it's a minus 6k and then every color on top of that 12K on the field, bare minimum. yeah it's it's gonna be an extra 6k and with magnamon being three colors that means it's uh four activations of minus 6k which is already insane in terms of the level of removal that card alone can kill two megas if they're just at base 12k which is like it's fairly fair it y- and if it's early in the game they probably don't even have two megas in the well, I mean, it's the fact that uh, it just, it's so hyper efficient at being able to clear the fields that uh, only gets I, better I, over time is the problem with the card. Because I do know that uh, based on looking at ahead in the Japanese spoilers, we're getting a lot of color spreads, like really wonky extra, like cards that have extra colors for like no reason, more three color cards. And, like, decks that are utilizing more colors than ever, like, uh, I'm going to go back to, like, the BT-18 spoilers that we're seeing with hybrids. It's just like, oh, yeah, now any hybrid deck that has part green in it or part yellow in it, which almost both of the lines do have, can now run Heaven's Judgment. And because the level 6 is also three colors, you're still running into that same issue where it's just like, okay... This card is literally becoming the best piece of removal in the entire game because of just the sheer quantity and quality of its removal. Because DP-based deletion 
is deleting it by compared to all of the other yeah like it it is removal by game mechanic so it's it's just a crazy strong removal that gets better because if you look at like any other like seven or eight cost removal card almost none of them they're removing uh, one of them yeah one body always yeah except for like long gate but that requires them to be at a specific amount of security yeah it's 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 like a lot harder for those bigger options to remove two bodies, let alone just the one that they're by default supposed to remove. It's like, it's not even that it's harder. It's actually impossible because none of them do besides Lunk. Like literally, if you look at all the yellow cards, like I'm looking at them all right now, yellow options, it's literally just Lunk. And that's if they're at three. There's no other yellow card that widely removes multiple bodies, like big bodies. It's literally just you kill one and then that's it. Plasma shot? That'd be like, what does that is? Are they going to use plasma shot? No. Like, so it's like, is what I mean by like this card. Like, you remove Heaven's Judgment, their main form of removal, and I guarantee people are like, Magna X becomes not that bad to deal with because then you could just go wide. And then they have to like have a Death X to deal with it or something like that. They have to have the card to deal with it. And if they don't, then they just lose because you could just swing past Magna X. Yeah, it's. Heaven's Judgment is definitely a very perplexing card uh, that I do think something, maybe not this very second, but something should oh, be done I about that, that card. card be, yeah, I would hit that before I hit Magnetics. But it, like, it's funny because thinking about all of the cards that we talked about, the majority of them just so happen to be yellow cards. Yellow. Uh, <laughs> like, and, and that, again, just kind of goes back to like my main proprietor hate of yellow is because it's working with some of the most dangerous mechanics and most powerful mechanics in the entire game. Recovery, almost no other color has. Well, now, uh, apparently... Here green, and there. Yeah, yeah uh, appar- apparently green is going to be getting it, and purple sort of kind of has it because of the two-colorness with yellow, but uh, I digress. Like, usually... DP minus is just better than any other kind of form of like, just get rid of that body because it has so much flexibility attached to it that the other options don't have. Um, then you have recovery, which again is just, uh, it, it just prolongs the game for almost no reason. If you're just using it just to recover, but they, they tried to balance recovery by making it more specific and attaching it to various other conditions as we've seen, like, with the Pulsemon stuff, because it's like, oh, if I'm less than three security and I die, refill up to three security. It, it, like, is playing around with it, but it's not in, like, a very obnoxious way. And, like, that's what's partially making security control so good, is just the generic recovery on top of the sheer abuse of just how security works, which is what yellow is primarily playing around with. But I'm not saying, like, we should just ban yellow. It's just a coincidence that all the cards that we were talking about are just so happened to be yellow, just like last time, where all of the cards that were being talked about just so happened to be purple, because purple is the second best color next to yellow, because of the fact that it can use the trash more efficiently than any other color in the game, making it basically a second resource. Where it's like, yeah, sure, Deeper Gates is playing with the trash, Red Hybrids is playing with the trash, but they're not really, really playing with the trash. They're not actively trying to fill it and use it as a resource. It's just a thing that happens for them yeah i mean you can look at those two colors like yellow and purple and those are definitely like the colors that have the most danger when it comes to their cards in general just because of the the nature of what they're doing like it it just takes one extremely strong card and it tips the scale so hard when it's those colors like because you can look at every other deck and like the only time that like a deck really like that wasn't those colors. Well, I mean, like was it like the Doru Greymon ban or limit, I should say. Like, yeah, but that was that because was on... Doru Greymon was making Alpha. Yeah, it did everything. Un- yeah, it was making it uninteractable while adding Security Tech Plus to a card that already wants to multi-attack, which is already exactly. a recipe for disaster, as we've seen clearly with all of the multi-attacking decks. And if you give them Security Tech Plus, it just makes them even faster. Makes it worse. Right. So it's like. And, like, but that that's what I mean by, like, those cards, like, just all it takes is that one little push, and out of nowhere they get absurd. And purple and yellow are super, super volatile when it comes to that. 
Like, yes. Just any card that just gets printed out of nowhere. Just get absurd. Like, they just randomly get so good. And then it becomes a problem. Then they have to ban or limit or whatever. Uh, which we haven't gotten yet besides Purple. Purple was the one that got definitely got the gun to their head for sure. Uh, yeah, but now we're thinking of at Yellow because of, like, just the sheer amount of good They haven't been stuff. touched. Yeah, they, well, they have been touched, but not recently enough to really, like, warrant some impact like, because... Like, what, like, Sunrise? That was it? Yeah, like, Sunrise and uh, Jet were, like, the two big Yellows. Yeah, that was a while yellows. ago. Yeah, that, that was a while ago. And Yellow's gotten so much more generically good tools. Like, I'm not saying we should just ban, like, a whole bunch of Yellow no. cards. I think there's some very specific ones that do kind of just need to be, like, okay. actually looked at. I've given my sense on that. I, I know for sure that it's definitely the option and the tamer more than anything else. That just enabled the bullshit. Yeah, because, like, I'm sitting here and I'm <clears throat> looking at all of the decks and I'm trying to think, like, what is the most egregiously stupid thing that this deck is doing that really warrants something getting banned? I think, like, the 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 deck that I would want something to get hit from outside of Ukamon is probably Numemon because Numa X is just stupid. I think like Monza X is fine, but Numa X Numa is, is, is kind of stupid. Like floating into a level six is crazy. Yeah, a level four floating into a level six is stupid. I think that's incredibly that poor. surpluses gains memory. Like it's just that's just too much and sets up their trash more. Yeah, like, there's there's very easy, like, cards in very specific decks that we could just take a look at and say, oh, just hit it. Like, I know a lot of people really hate Mirage, and, like, there's actually no real good card to hit in Mirage outside of literally the BT level 6 or burst mode. That's it. BT11, that's it. Yeah. Just like, hit BT11. I guarantee the deck gets way better. Well, it, it gets worse by it uh, without well, BT11. What I mean is, yeah, it, well, what I mean it gets better is for it everyone else. It becomes manageable. Yeah. Like it becomes manageable to play against right uh um, that card just enables way too much i mean it's just the the printing of like it it is a floodgate in of itself because it's really trying to limit uh, the opponent's ability to draw and it's taxing their draw which we don't really have a whole lot of taxing like no, it's, it's almost very unique. it's almost like what bagra should have been Bagra's just trying to be cute with playing with the sources and trying to set up digi crosses it's just like no magnet or uh mirage does the same thing just as a level six that just controls and can kill you. Like any any person who wanted to play that style of deck, just play Mirage instead and you'll have way more fun. Or uh, just play Galaxy and just run their Mirage top end because apparently that's a thing in Japan. Yeah, it's pretty good too. I played it not too long ago. It's pretty funny. Yeah, like the, the Galaxy package is already pretty decent and then they already have it in engine mirage card and they're just like what if we just run the level six would, would that work oh it does interesting they just won't get all the unsuspends and all that other crap but it yeah but the just, idea you is have, just you have to do way them. more setup yeah it's way yeah. more setup and then uh mirage isn't searchable but like that's that's part of the balance of certain things it's like how easy is it of a card to use for not just the deck it's made for um when it comes to, like, some more generic cards. Because, like, hybrids, uh, for a while, were pretty infamous because they just use whatever they want. And that, for the most part, is kind of true. But now they're getting more focused. Uh, because that's what made, that's what put Jet Silphy on the ban list is because it was just too easy for every yellow deck to use the yellow vaccine. Or, not yellow vaccine. Uh, yellow hybrid engine. And then just use whatever is the best level sixes for yellow at the time. Which it was Venus, so it just was yeah. super easy and super obnoxious. But like, 100% agree. but I don't necessarily think like specifically there's that many other cards that really needs to get hit. It's mostly just something from the Patamon engine, ideally Ukoman, uh, the training cards maybe because some people really like those, and I think those are fine of like one ofs because they're not really luck sacking you out of anything, and you do have memory boosts to supplement, so it's not like yeah. it's that bad. It just it's allowing the decks to have more option space is partially why I want it because a lot of decks are just running here's the six option package of memory boost and training, and then there's your consistency engine, and I I just hate it. I think it's so boring and so stupid. 
but uh, something from the trainings, obviously. Uh, and then Heaven's Judgment, and that's those are kind of the big ones that I would want to see. I'm not a Japanese player, so I don't know anything in the future if anything like from EX6 or BT17 needs to get hit. Uh, but as far as like what is currently impacting our format, I think those are the big ones. And then we could kind of like reevaluate later if those cards ever do get hit in terms of what should be banned and limited. I don't necessarily think they're going to do anything for BT16 because we have like one month of it before EX6. And then we have three <laughs> months of EX6. So get ready for that. Uh, so I do think like maybe ideally by EX6, they should hit something. I would hope so. Um, at least in my eyes, it makes the most sense to do so. One, just shake up the meta and hit some cards that are becoming problematic. Yeah. Because uh, I know Japan is starting to complain because, you know, Numemon and Magnemon are still the best decks by a wide margin. And some people can point to East's weekly videos, but that's weekly. That's not looking at the big picture. Um, and when I do my like big meta breakdowns, uh, as I kind of did last week, I look at the big picture. I see all of the data from all of the events. And I know a lot of other content creators just look at the individual event as is and say, yep, the format is healthy because this event had 10 different decks top. And I'm just like, that's not exactly what I would define health. Like, sure. You could have a for like, a uh, an event do that, but how consistent is that? And then how consistent are those 10 decks doing compared to the rest of the other decks? Like, that's something that a lot of people just don't exactly look at when it comes to deciding what reasonably should get banned or limited, not only just from a design perspective, but just like a play perspective, because we know that Bandai likes to hit cards also that have been overperforming for too long to really start shaking things up just because, you know, if everyone's still going to be on Magnemon, by BT19 in Japan, what does that tell us? Like, right now for English, even though we're not unified yet, it tells us that we don't need to buy anything if we already have the best deck going all the way into BT19. Like, I've been playing Mirage and Yellow and Red Hybrids for at least a year because I haven't had a reason to swap off of them because they're still some of the best decks in the format. Yeah. By a good margin. Yeah. So it's like, why would you need to switch if you just use those decks like you, you're just putting yourself in a position where you're making yourself work harder and I, I don't know like i think that's a that's dumb a good portion of the time yeah so like looking at the bigger picture gives you more perspective in terms of finding what's actually wrong with the game uh, and trying to fix it. On top of the fact that I'm a deck builder, I build almost every deck in the game. Whether I actually play it or not is to be determined. Uh, I try to show off as many decks on my YouTube channel as I possibly can. So when I get into a habit of building with specific cards, that's a pattern as a deck builder that I acknowledge that some people just might not even think about or even want to address because it's just like, like I said, with the, the consistency package for the options, it's like, yeah, just four training, two boosts, you're good to go for any color, like any monocolor deck or any deck that's sharing one specific color. And I think that's a shame because we're losing out on the space to use other cards because of that. Like our options lineup is a lot slimmer in terms of what we want to use because those cards are basically acting as too good of generic tools to search and dig out whatever we need yeah that's just that's just it's too easy yeah so it's just like oh i'm having a hard time finding space for removal why is that well because all of the options are being eaten up by training cards and memory boost and uh similar cards like that like i think delay is a very tricky keyword to try to do stuff with at this point because I thought it was really cool the way it was first implemented, and it was immediately broken. Uh, we did ju we just didn't realize it at the time, but it was broken, um, and now they're just basically proven how broken that type of a keyword is. And at least we're getting a single card that could deal with it. I hope we get more, just to be <clears throat> able to try to control them like we did with Tamers, where it's just like a little bit here and there, 
would be nice just to be able to try to keep those types of cards in check. Because right now there's just zero counterplay. And I think like that's the big problem with uh, a lot of the cards that we're kind of like referencing is the fact that there's just zero counterplay to them. It's just like Magnamod has immunity. He's three colors. He makes something like uh, Heaven's Judgment super easy to just kill the opponent because they couldn't kill you because you're Magnamon and you have blocker and are bigger than them and also have immunity so they can't deal with you. Like there's just a lot of compounding uh, factors, but it all boils down to uninteractivity. Yes. And uh, I believe in that sentiment as well. All right. I follow that sentiment as well because it just like, it, it feels like decks are very easy to make when it comes to like for example the trading cards and that like it's just you know you're gonna run four you know you're gonna run at least one to two of the uh, memory boosts and then it's like begging decks cookie cutter it makes it feel like there's no creativity yeah <clears throat> And, like, we're not saying that they're going to ban cards just to make deck building more creative. Oh, no. They're, they're no not. Way. It's just that these are things that are making, that are not necessarily making the game better. Um, making deck building boring is obviously one of them. Making cards uninteractive because the faster something goes, like with Patamon um, and TK and Emissary, means that there's less ability to respond to them. Um, and like, that's the core crux of why cards get hit is because they're either moving too fast compared to the rest to where you literally can't keep up or do anything about it. Or once you're already there, there's nothing you could do about it, which again is just not a good feeling or position to be in. So, but yeah, uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts, um, uh, on what you think should get banned and limited and when you think they should get banned and limited because that's also a very viable question that some people might not exactly uh, uh, talk about because something might be really good now but might be really bad later uh, because Bandai usually does like to do um, solution selling where it's just like, yeah, we created a problem and here's the solution a couple of sets later. Uh, or we already have the solution for it, you just didn't realize it and... Uh, now we introduced a problem forcing you to use it. And I, I'm i not a huge fan of solution selling, but I know Bandai does it, which is why when is a good question to ask also. But... Of course. Yeah. But I think this is a good stopping point uh, because there's just so much that we could go into on bans and restrictions, and we could go into the minutiae of each individual deck and figure out what is a card yeah. that we would want banned, but I I don't necessarily think that's the, the conversation we exactly want to have. Uh, and I think like just looking at the bigger picture, figuring out what are some of our current problem cards and why uh, definitely is more beneficial. So thank you, no, everyone. I think we hit it. I think we hit it on the dot for sure. Yeah, because I don't necessarily think anything else realistically needs to get banned or limited at this time. Uh, obviously, no. when something gets hit, there's going to be a power vacuum and something's got to fill that vacuum. But multiple things, like what we saw with Apocalypse Ban, could fill that vacuum to create an interesting format. Um, yeah. So, at this point, I want to thank everyone for listening all the way to the end. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you do... Don't forget to try to support the podcast and share it with others on social media, and we will see you uh, next time.